Good morning, uh, afternoon, actually, everybody, just now. Um, welcome to another episode of the Italian Vegan. Today, as you will know, we'll, uh, we'll be cooking another um, juggernaut of Italian cuisine, which is the lasagna. Um, obviously, it is a uh, vegan alternative, so it doesn't include, it doesn't contain any meat or uh, animal products, uh, but it's just going to be, it's going to be just as tasty as, um, you know, as the one with, uh, with meat, uh, meat and, and, and cheese. So um, it's going to take a little while to prepare, so be ready because there's been quite a few things to, uh, to get ready. Um, but so um, I'm going to, to start going uh, straight away. Um, but in case, um, in case you have any, any doubts, as there are quite a few things to do today, so we might have to, do, to go quite quickly. Um, as usual, obviously at the moment you are muted, uh, but um, uh, if you need to ask any questions, just unmute yourself and, and ask the question and then uh, mute yourself again once, uh, once you're satisfied with the answer. Um, you know, this is obviously, as usual, it's a, it's a Zoom meeting, uh, so it's meant to be interactive. Uh, and I want you to, to come out with, um, with, with, a, with a nice dish at the end of it. So make sure that, um, um, make sure that you, do, you do ask any questions if you're not sure about anything. Um, you can ask the questions uh, either in, uh, you know, in real voice or um, obviously you can type them in, uh, um, you can type them in the, in, in the chat box. Um, just before we before we start, just to make sure that you can hear me correctly, can you just um, can you just let me know if you can hear me okay? Uh, just type it in the chat box um, if uh, if the you know the, my voice is carrying through uh, nicely, uh, or if I need to um, adjust any any other settings. Any? Just watching from USA. Oh, Deborah Payne is just watching from USA, Texas. Oh, welcome, welcome, Deborah. Uh, actually, it must be really, really early, really early in Texas. So you must be very, very keen to um, to cook lasagna during the night. Fantastic! It's lovely to have um, six a.m. Six a.m. Wow! <laughs> so you can have lasagna for breakfast. <laughs> Fantastic! Fantastic. Okay, shall we? Shall we get going then? Are you all? Um, are you all ready to go? Okay, fantastic. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, obviously, um, I, I will just, just go very quickly and go through the ingredients. Um, for the ragu, obviously, we'll be using uh, brown, brown lentils. Um, I haven't, haven't done anything to them yet, so we'll, we'll get going in a second. Obviously, you need water. You need a, um, a couple of sticks of celery. Um, you need some uh, couple of carrots, uh, rosemary, and I forgot to put these in the ingredients, but it doesn't matter if you add them. I'm just going to use um, a couple of uh, bay leaves uh, for when I'm when I'm cooking the um, uh, the lentils and and a little a little chili, and we'll need some uh, we'll need some garlic as well. Like three or four cloves are enough. Um, where else? Salt, uh, some pepper, some olive oil, and a onion. Okay, this is for the to make the ragu, and uh, then we will make a bechamel as well for the lasagna. Uh, for the bechamel, we will need uh, um, a liter of. We use any alternative milk they use. We use uh, oat milk, so that's fine. If you use rice milk or almond milk, that's that's fine as well. Or if you're not vegan, you can use obviously normal milk. Uh, I have here 100 grams of uh, um, margarine and uh, 100 grams of uh, double O flour. Okay, so the very fine ones. This is this is the one. This is the one that I'm using. Okay, so double O flour. Uh, if you can find it, if you can't use whatever flour you have, um, you will need one of these. And obviously we will need the lasagna sheets. Um, <clears throat> it could be done with fresh with fresh pasta, but just they would have been far too long. So I'm using I'm using these already um, already prepared ones, um, and we we quickly blanch them in uh, in uh, in boiling water and then use them uh, for the lasagna. And you will need a tray. I'm not making a lot today, so I'm using a small tray. But um, feel free to use as much as you want. Lasagna is one of those dishes that you can cook in big quantities and you can then um, uh, freeze. 
uh, to eat uh, to eat later. So you might want to do like freeze it in a, in a tray like this, you know, um, and have a few, or or you can then uh, you can then move it um, just just before you um, before you before you cook it. Obviously, once it's prepared, then you freeze it uh, before cooking or after. Okay. Also, we will need some uh, nutmeg. Some um, some chopped tomatoes and some uh, um, some cheese. Okay, okay. So let's get going straight away. The first thing we we'll need to do we we'll get the um, uh, the lentils and just quickly wash them under running water. Once we've done that, we'll, um, we'll get a pan where we can, we're going to cook the lentils. Um, in there. Make sure I don't leave anything behind. <coughs> we add water, we cover them with water. How much? I mean, I've, I've added about half half a pan of water here. As I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to use the cooking water as well to um, to cook the lasagna. So turn the water on on high. We will add just a, at the moment. We'll add just a pinch of salt um, because otherwise it makes it makes them thicker, harder, and take take longer to cook. So I'll just add add a pinch of salt and we will adjust, uh, adjust the salt later. Uh, where's my knife? <clears throat> we will add um, one of the celery sticks, just cut it in a couple of pieces and add it to the water. <clears throat> the same with the carrot. I'm using organic carrots, so I don't um, I don't peel them. I'm just cutting a couple of pieces and throw it in. Throw the bay leaves. They can go in as well. <clears throat> and uh, a couple of cloves of garlic like this. I don't need to do anything. Just just, to just go in and uh, just go in as well. Uh, and and the and my and my chili. Okay, so these are quite potent, as you've heard me say before. They like, you know, came to me by uh, as a whole plant by my dad. So, um, if you have a fresh one, you can eat a fresh one, or if you have a dry one, normally you will have to use something a bit bigger than this, which is not quite as strong. And unless you we cover, okay, so that's it. And we wait, we wait for it to come to the um, uh, to the boil, okay. And then once we come to the boil, we add a little bit of salt and we let it, we will let it cook for about 20 minutes. Okay. <clears throat> now let's get to, um, we can start preparing um, the other ingredients that we will need for, um, for the ragu, which is the tomato. Okay, you can, you can use, um, Right. I'm going to be using I'm going to be using uh, tin tomatoes. Um, so what I'll do I'll quickly put them in the food processor. If you're using passata, then obviously you don't need to do that because because um, you know it's already it's already uh, seeded. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to be using um, as I said about 550 600 grams. These containers are 400, so one and a half, one and a half of these go in.
Okay. So you only half of the second time. Okay. <clears throat> I have about one teaspoon of salt. And I have my remaining garlic. So you should have a couple of couple of cloves of garlic. This is the only preparation that I've done is actually um, um, prepare, weigh the ingredients and uh, clean the garlic. All the rest we're doing from scratch. So I put this in the in the nutri bullet and do the noise. Okay, so this is ready. Um, what we're going to do now, in the meantime, we'll, we'll prepare a um, um, vegetables to, um, to prepare a soffritto, which is, um, as I explained before in other, in other episodes, is when we gently fry, pan fry um, the vegetables to provide, to provide a base um, for, the, for the sauce. Um, so um, I will I will um, um, cut the celery finely. Again, that was um, the message. Thank you for your little genius. Those recipes of yours are life savers. That's from Evelyn. Oh, thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Evelyn. And so this is these are, you know, um, they are traditional recipes, but also they are adapted to make them as easy as possible, because this is what we do when we cook at home. You know, you don't you don't want to impress anybody you know you just want to you just want to do things as quickly as you can and, and as tastefully as you can so i uh, will shut the celery is the lentil uh, asking for lentils are on yes the lentils are on i put them on um, i don't know if you missed if you come on a little bit later or then you missed the step i just washed the lentils and I put them in. I put them in there, covered in water, and I just put a celery stick, a carrot, um, a couple of bay leaves, and a couple of cloves of garlic, and a chili, and just a pinch of salt. And I put it on a high flame. So we want to bring it to the boil as quickly as we can because it will take about 15-20 minutes um, once um, uh, once the water starts boiling. So the lentils are on. And we're preparing um, the other bits that we need for the uh, ragu sauce, okay? So I'm chopping, at the moment I'm chopping the celery. Chili. This is from Deborah. Wanting to know what type of chili it is. Uh, Deborah, I just used a um, a dry a dry chili. Uh, mine is quite it's quite strong, but um, chili is one of those things that you use uh, to taste. So we you know we come from all over the world. Some people like things very hot. Some people don't. Um, so you can you can even forget about the chili completely if you don't like um, if you don't like your food. Uh, too hot, but it's going. It's, it gets in boiled, so it's not going to add a lot of heat to the dish. Um, but yeah, you can use a, you can use a, um, any any kind of hot hot chili that you uh, that you have in the kitchen. Okay, so that's number one. We're going. I'm going to be use a um, nonstick pan. To prepare the sauce, and you want to possibly use something that is quite wide because then it will be quicker to um, um, to reduce the sauce. Otherwise, if you use a tool a tool pot, it will just take a lot longer. Yes, reducing the sauce is that once we add the tomato, it's going to be like very watery. 
and uh, we want to cook it to just basically let the water ev evaporate uh, and so we get we get a thicker a thicker sauce uh, and obviously if there is a bigger surface of the pan the um it will evaporate quicker than if there was a smaller surface and a smaller pot um, then um, the, the part in contact with the heat is uh, smaller okay so i've got the um cellar in there i will now cut a carrot as well again you want to chop it as finely as we can so i'll cut it first in strips and then chop it Nice. Oh, thank you. It's actually just a, a, a nice that we got from um, from Ludo, but it cuts really well. So uh, I've tried to look after it and not um, and um, and not blunt it. Um, mostly want to know if the celery will cut in strips. Yes, uh, Rosalind, cut it as um, as um, chop it as finely as you can. Okay, the. Um, the lentils are actually um, boiling right now, so I will add I will add now a little bit more salt, a, a tablespoon of salt, and now we let them cook. I reduce the heat now and cover it again. And and I'll let them cook. I'll just uh, get something to. Can you take the time, please, so at least I know how much how long they've been been cooking. So I'll carry on chopping. Just yeah, just time, if you please. So I'll just have to give you a rough idea of how long it's been on. They normally take about twenty minutes, fifteen twenty minutes from from when the water starts boiling. The the, um, the good thing about lentils is that, um, um, as opposed opposed to many of the other pulses, they don't need any preparation at all. So you don't need to soak them overnight, and you can add them quickly to uh, to your dishes. So it saves a lot of time. Okay, now you do the same thing with the onion. So. Always leave this part, the, the, the part with the roots, because it makes it, it makes it easier to cut. Okay, so what, what you what you do with the onions, you just peel them, peel them back, the outer layer, and then we got we got kind of like a handle that we can use to um, to hold the onion as we cut it. Okay, so let me just get rid of this. Okay, so what I tend to do, I tend to do a couple of cuts, like I do a cut, horizontal cut first, without going the whole way. And I do some cuts, again, without going the whole way. And then I can, uh, when, I, when I chop, it will be already, Chop finely because it's in many pieces already. There we are, and we left it down. Again, as you can see, I can 
I am cutting that without cutting the things off. So we still go, as you can see, it's still attached to the to my handle. Okay. And you can do a horizontal cut as well, again without going your way. And then you start chopping. <laughs> must say that I copied it from my professional chef. <laughs> it's, um, it's kind of like tips that you that you find out as you go along. But it's good to share. Okay. This is ready. And we just wait because we need to combine it with the um, um, with the uh, lentils. So we won't get it going quite quite yet. We we'll wait a few minutes. <coughs> the only other thing we need to chop as well is the, um, the rosemary. So let's get all the leaves off. Of the woody stem. I love, I absolutely love fresh rosemary. It's so such a such a rich smell and flavor. I actually, you know, just to give when I when I go running in in the morning, um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of our, of our neighbors that got rosemary in their garden, and a lot of it is kind of like over overflowing on the outside of their garden. So. I, I love just with brushing past, you know, as I'm running and just that, um, smelling, um, the, you know, the, the heady aroma of rosemary. It's beautiful. Okay. A couple of branches should, should be enough. I've got three here, but use what you have. Evelyn says, I haven't tried rosemary in my lasagna before. Today would be, be my first time. Okay, good. This is a kind of like a different lasagna. Okay, so probably than what you used to. Um, that's, lovely. It's lovely. So again, we will try and chop it as finely as you can. Your fingers. Mm -hmm. This is getting messier than I expected, but much at the end the result will be nice anyway. if it, if they are nicely chopped then it makes it you know, a bit more pleasant when you eat it because nobody wants to chop on a uh, chomp on a big on a big bit of rosemary so much nicer yeah it's nice it's so much so much nicer and, and this what this what it is this what it's um it's one of the um one of the things of italian of italian cooking is like not many ingredients, but as nice as you can get them. And uh, every every region in Italy, obviously, has got its um, its own um, favorite ingredients. Often, often uh, is because of what of what would grow in that in that in that in that area. Italy is a very um, it's got many mountains, and the land is not is not always um, very fertile. So many many regions are very limited in the amount of things they could grow. And they, they've basically they have developed to use um, um, all the all the fresh ingredients to their best um, in the best way. Evelyn says Italy is the best. We agree, don't we? We agree, Evelyn. Yes, it is definitely the best, at least for food, <laughs> not for government. Okay. 
So we have that in there. The other thing we will need, obviously, to start to get this going in a minute, we will need olive oil. Okay, so do you want me to measure it or not? I normally I normally don't, but I can I can try just to give you an idea. Suppose that something like this. No, I haven't shot this onion very well, so I'll just take a couple of bits out and finish it off in a minute. Um, possibly I will say about six, six to seven tablespoons. About 100 ml roughly of olive oil. Okay, so that should be. And um, how much time is in? Okay. I mean, so we still got a little while before um, before the um, before the lentils are ready. Okay, let me just finish these onions. I suppose we can start. We can start putting this on the on the hob, as obviously it would take a few minutes for this to uh, to soften up. We we'll just put it on a low heat, okay? So we put it on. Add a little pinch of salt. No time to add the um, tomato yet, but I start getting it ready and just want to make sure that our paste is going to make sure it's the right. And I don't need to add anything. Okay, Maria, let's recap. Um, so what we, what's happening now? We are cooking. Okay, sorry, just before you start, where um, the chips is tender. This is something from Rosemary. Where are the chips is celery? The celery is in here with the carrots and the onions and the olive oil and a pinch of salt. Um, and they are uh, gently, um, gently cooking. And it's starting to, starting to warm up the oil. We'll take a few minutes. <coughs> this is the yeah, celery. <coughs> and there are also, there's also one stick of celery is in the water with the lentils. Okay, let me just get this out. Okay, let's recap. Uh, we put the lentils <coughs> to cook in water with um, a celery stick. A, a carrot, a couple of cloves of garlic, a little chili, a dry chili. Uh, what else? Are bay leaves. Oh yes, uh, and, a, and a couple of bay leaves as well, uh, and a pinch of salt. <clears throat> bring it to the boil. Put it on a high flame. You bring it to the boil. Um, add about a one tablespoon of salt, and uh, uh, I lower lower the heat because the water is already boiling, and um, that would take roughly about twenty minutes. 20 minutes to cook. So this is what's going on in this in this pan. As you can see, we've got the lentils in there. Uh, how, how long? It's been 12 minutes. 12 minutes. 12 minutes, okay. So start having a taste of the lentils. Okay, they're not be hard yet, but um, better in a few minutes. A few minutes will be much better. Okay, in that. In this other pan, instead we have yeah, carrots, um, celery, 
and <coughs> sorry carrot celery onion rosemary and it, uh, and, uh, and olive oil and <coughs> Um, I added a pinch of salt and uh, I put it on. Uh, I put it on the on, on a low flame, just starting to it started to <laughs> um, So, um, anything anything else at the moment? No, that's it. So we wait for this to uh, to sizzle and um, and to start softening up. And once uh, once the lentils are ready, we'll um, uh, we get them all. We get them out and and add them. Add them to this. So the lentils will be part cooked um, in the boiling water, and then we'll finish cooking them in uh, in the tomato sauce. Okay. Um, now, depending on the tomatoes that you're using, uh, <clears throat> once we we want the you want the tomato to be quite quite fluid. So um, you know, as usual, we might use some of the cooking water um, to loosen it up if it is a little bit too thick. Evans asking what type of lentils are you using <coughs> in this recipe? I'm using brown lentils. That's plain, plain brown lentils. Um, but it won't make much difference if you use a few lentils or green lentils. And, and these are these are the uh, I find they're quite easy, quite easy to cook. Um, and also the colour, the colour as well for lasagna it does resemble once you cook, you know, it does resemble the uh, the colour of meat. So the people that people that are not maybe they're not vegan they're not used to this you can um, you can uh, get them going for a little bit longer because i'm sure that once they once they taste them it doesn't it won't really matter if there is meat or not i mean all the dishes all the dishes that we cook um i i, I used to eat quite happily before um before i became vegan and i never never worried about that it was a vegan dish that was you know because obviously my Mother and my grandmother would never use that term because at the time it wasn't really it wasn't really a, a term that people used. They just cooked nice dishes with vegetables, you know. I think it's the same thing. Um, so now the um, um, the sofrito here we starting. I don't know if you can hear it on the audio. It started sizzling, so it's softening now. We just want it, you know. We just leave it, leave it to it. Every now, every now and again, you give it, give it a turn. Um, and that's how. That's, that's basically will provide then the flavor for the uh, uh, for the sauce that we're making. I will use a soft spoon to uh, instead of draining, instead of throwing away the water because the water is uh, it's, it's full of. Um, it's full of nutrients. Um, instead of instead of throwing it away, um, I'm just going to be draining using a slotted spoon. Um, so we can then use the water to cook uh, to cook the lasagna sheets. Um, so in a minute, once we got this going, then we start making the bechamel. Um, and I didn't want to turn the oven on too early because it's so hot today. Uh, but the, the oven would need to be turned on to about between 100, depending on how strong your oven is, but around 180 or 200, uh, 200 degrees. So in the meantime, what I'll do, actually, I'll empty my oven. And I'll start turning it, turning it on. Actually, let's wait. Let's wait another ten minutes because we still got quite a bit of time to go. Um, <clears throat> you should be able to if you if you put the rosemary in. You know when you start really smelling the rosemary and the and the celery, that it, that it means that they, they are getting cooked. And I can now, now in this kitchen is a lovely lovely waft of um, of rosemary. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Are we going? Are we doing some time? Seventeen minutes. Okay, so seventeen minutes. The lentils will be pretty much 
pretty much ready to come out in a minute and let, let them go another couple of minutes while these um, kids um, keep gently, gently pan, pan frying. Another little taste. Because now we got the lentils that got salt, the tomatoes that got salt, these are going to be salt, so we won't need to add any more. It's fine anyway. Any questions so far? Do you want me to recap anything or we got any doubts about um, uh, things that we've done so far? Um, <coughs> How many of you are cooking today? I know Rosaline always is because she sends them beautiful pictures every time, every time um, we have a, we have a cook along. Any more? Any more cooks today? Okay, I'm cooking my first vegetarian lasagna today. Oh wow! Excellent, the first vegetarian lasagna. <coughs> <coughs> Everything okay, Katrina? What's happening? Uh, yeah. Okay, so okay, the first vegetarian lasagna. <coughs> Actually, <coughs> everything. <coughs> lasagna is one of those dishes that be like um like pasta or pizza and uh, <clears throat> although abroad uh, it's the the variety with uh, with meat <clears throat> is the one that's better known there are many ways of cooking lasagna that, that don't uh, they don't have meat <clears throat> it's often um, it's often done with um, with spinach for example um and then spinach mixed very well with um, um with the bechamel and it's a lovely it's a lovely rich, uh, rich dish as well. So you, you might have often seen white lasagna rather than, uh, rather than red, red one. Okay, so these are, these are now ready. What we do, we just drain them with a spoon and we'll add them to the ragu. You can throw everything in, okay? So carrots, celery, everything. <coughs> the carrots and celery are traditional thing that you use in them um, uh, to flavor to flavor both the broth and, and also the uh, uh, most of the tomato sauces that we make in Italy. Most of them have got uh, carrots and celery in it. Especially if they are uh, tomato sauces that need to cook for a while. Um, they give them, um, they give the extra, extra little bit of, um, of flavor and also they, um, a bit of sweetness as well. Um, and sometimes the tomato can be quite sharp. What was blended earlier, Rosalind's asking? Just tomato, tomato with a little bit of salt and um, uh, some, uh, some garlic. And okay. Mary said, I will have a go looking forward to trying lentils in a lasagna. And Evelyn, how about using a can of lentils? Does it also work or does it get all mushy? Uh, I, I must be honest, I must be honest with you. Um, what was that? Was Evelyn. Evelyn. I, I don't normally even cook with um, with cans. I know they can um, they can um, uh, shorten the cooking time, but uh, I'm just just as a, I normally always cook from ingredient with ingredient from scratch. Um, so I can't I can't really answer. I don't know. I never had um, I never had a can of um, lentils already cooked, so I can't tell you how it would be to cook with them. I don't have that kind of experience. Thank you. I'll just turn these up. Can we all do this? Mm. 
I hope you got the right quantities, by the way, of, um, I, I don't know if I talked about it earlier on. I use uh, 330 grams of uh, lentils, about 550 or 600 of tomato. Um, and then the other things you see me, you see me use. Rosemary was asking, um, was it chopped tomatoes that we used and how much, or that we blended, sorry, and how much? Um, Rosalind, I've used um, whatever I had. I've used one and a half cans. Yeah, I have, I've used one, one and a half cans of chopped tomatoes. I mean, you could have had plum tomatoes or, or you could have used passata instead. Um, so it's it doesn't. Grams, it's 550 grams that I've, uh, I've used. Um, I mean, I haven't been to be honest with you, I haven't measured that precisely, but I use one and a half tins, which are about 600 grams. One tin is 400 grams, so um, I use one and a half. Okay. I tell you what, this is there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things still in there. So what I will do, actually, I'll I'll, I'll save the rest and but keep the water. Hello. Okay. I can't. I'm finding. I'm struggling to get them all out with the, the screen. Okay. Well, as you can see, there was still quite a few, quite a few in there. I kept all the water in there. Now, let me show the all them. Before I add the tomatoes. I want to be sure they all take the flavor of the um, sofrito that we were using before. Tomato sauce to it. Combine everything very well. Okay, oops, sorry. I send the tomato sauce flying. Okay, mine is quite is quite thick already. So what I'll do because we need to still need to cook these a little bit. I'll add a little bit of no, not with this. Have a little bit of um, cooking water. Judge um, judge by what you have, depending on the tomatoes they use. Okay, so you want it to be quite quite right. fluid at the moment. Evelyn says this has to be one of the best ways um, to cook lentils, humble lentils, so yummy. Exactly, and um, I, I, I will show more. I will show you more in the next few weeks. But there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, reliance on on beans and pulses in the, in Italian cooking, and they are obviously the. The cheapest ingredients you can get, but it's so tasty. Okay, so we'll get that at the moment. I will cover it. Sorry, can I, can I <coughs> carry to get it to to bring it to the boil again, and uh, we we'll let it 
we let it cook. We let it cook to um, to reduce. I just I just remedy my mess that I created. Okay. Now we've done <coughs> we've done this this part. Now possibly I, I don't have a lot of cooking water in there, so I might need to um, add some more. Rosalind said, "My batch blend tomatoes, garlic salt. Was there anything else in it?" Uh, no, just that, Rosalind. So you got it. We've done it before with the uh, tomatoes for other sauces. So it's the same. It's the same process. Okay. What we do now? We start working on the bechamel. Okay. So I'll get that. So where shall I do this? What's it doing here? Okay. First thing I'll do, I'll get my milk. And I'll just put it in a pan. Um, a whole a whole litre, so a whole bottle. Okay, so this is just about one litre pan, as you can see. Okay, put it on a very low heat. We want to bring it to the point to just before, just before it starts boiling. Is it on? No. What sort of heat are the lentils on that high or low? At the moment, the lentils are on uh, are on low. It doesn't matter. So we, now that they are boiling, we just want to we just want to let some of the heat, some of the um, uh, water vapor evaporate. Uh, but at the same time, we need it for cooking. So what we we'll do is just instead of instead of covering them completely, we just we just leave one side open for the um, um, for the steam to leave, and we we'll get going with the um, as I said with the um, with the bechamel sauce. Where's my whisk? Okay. So what we do? We put the I've got the uh, margarine. 100 grams, 100 grams of margarine. I put it in and <clears throat> I'll turn this on. And you only need it on a, on a, on a low heat, you don't need it. <clears throat> and we let it, we let it melt. <clears throat> and then we we'll need the whisk because as we combine the flour, we, want, we just want to make sure that there are no, uh, no bits in it. <clears throat> With the milk, you just want to add a little bit like half a, half a teaspoon the less of um, grated nutmeg, ground nutmeg. I mean, if you if you have the old, you know the original thing, the, um, the nutmeg itself, you need to grate it. I am cheating using one that it's already already ground for me. And I have a little a little pinch of salt to the milk as well. <coughs> Margarine is melting. And um, I've got I've got here ready a hundred grams, hundred grams of uh, again double oat flour as I showed you I showed you before. So wait for the margarine to be all melted. Okay, now as you can see, can you see? Yeah, so we just start, start adding the flour. And as we add the flour, we keep whisking. 
That will make it easier to, to avoid any, any lumps. It is extra fine, yes. It is, the, it is the double O flower, so it is the finest. Once this is combined, uh, you can see it becomes like a paste. We will then split the milk to whisk. And just let it turn it up a little bit. And once it's nice and once the milk is nice and hot, we will we will start adding it slowly. This is right to the point. So I'll let it a little room up a little bit more. I might start with um <coughs> With that to get it out. Okay. Let's check the temperature. A little bit more, so it's a little bit longer. And we need to we keep an eye on the on the ragu. And pretty much let it do its 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 thing. We just um give it a turn every now and then. And also if you might want to might want to be able to taste then it's lovely. More that you don't really need to, but you know. Please recap on sauce, please, if you can Rosaline. Um Rosaline, are you talking about this? Or are you talking about the um um the lentils, the ragu? Okay, so what we did, we put the lentil. Sorry, what's that? Is that dancing? No. And I think she means this the uh, Oh, this one. Yeah. Okay, the bechamel. We just had um, we just had the um, um, uh, margarine and flour. It's about 100 grams of margarine and 100 grams of flour. And then um, what we do as the as we bring the milk almost to the boil nice and hot and then we start gently adding adding it in yeah first of all we melt the margarine combine the flour and by using using a whisk could you suggest a substitute for nutmeg a substitute for nutmeg um what is that you don't know you're allergic to nuts Michaela? Um, and if you don't have nutmeg, don't worry about it. Uh, just a little bit of flavoring. The, um, if you don't have it, just do it without. Sorry. This is a bit hot.
so. Right, Evelyn's got a question. Um, yes, Evelyn. Any mistakes that you avoid for making a Bechamel sauce? Um, the only thing is that just adding the milk, adding the milk slowly, and um, and also uh, just just bear in mind that the bechamel sauce uh, sauce will uh, thicken as it cools, so we don't need to um, um, to make it to make it too too thick. You want to leave it. You want to leave it still quite. Um, well, it's not ready. It's not ready yet. Nobody, okay. it, be, it will be like a similar consistency to a, um, you know, if you're making custard. Just make sure that it's not stuck to the side of the sides of the pan, and keep using keep using the whisk to uh, to make sure that there are no um, bits in the sauce. You can see now it's starting to thicken up already. So in a minute I will turn it off. <clears throat> the milk has to be hot. This is Evelyn's asking. Uh, yes, yes, Evelyn. You've got to be just a <coughs> hot, just a not <coughs> not boiling, not boiling that hot. Okay, you can see. Generally, the way the way to see when it's when it's ready, it's um, what um, well, my mother always says is when you can write on it. You can see, so when you can actually leave, leave a um, um, the, 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 the part that's, that's dripping off, it doesn't doesn't sink to the bottom anymore. But you can start, you can actually see it on the surface. It won't, it won't need a lot, a lot longer than this. And I don't think we don't need to use the whisk anymore. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I'm just making sure that there are no bits attached to sides. Right. Little tip is new to me. Yes, you never use it when you're doing custard. Just use another pinch of pinch of salt. Okay. The bechamel is pretty much is pretty much ready. Getting really hot in this kitchen. <laughs> it is probably not the best day to do this to prepare this dish. <clears throat> Another bit of taste. You can see now, and now it's right. We are writing. Can you see that? So I will turn it off. Just give it another. Make sure there's not sticking at the bottom, and we'll let it cool down. Okay, it's quite it's nice and nice and thick now, and it will get a little bit thicker as well as it cools down. Okay, so we got the bechamel ready as well. Okay, now. The only thing would be to to wait for this to be ready. In the meantime, we can start um, 
we can start preparing our lasagna now. Okay, this is not, won't take much longer to be ready. We just want to reduce the sauce a little bit, a little bit more. But we're almost there. And also we want to check because the we don't want the um, we don't want the lentils to turn into a mush because they need to have a little bit of bite as well um, as meat would have it you know if you were eating a normal lasagna. It's lovely, it's lovely actually. So only only another two or three minutes. Okay. Well, we can start doing now. We can start um, cooking our lasagna sheets. Let me make some room in here. And what I'll do right. <clears throat> we just put the lasagna the lasagna on a um, on a on a cloth. Because obviously we want we don't want to use it when it's too um, um, too wet. So I'll add a little bit of water to the um, um, to the lentils the lentils water, and we use it to cook the lasagna. Evelyn says so yummy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Evelyn. It's a nice compliment. I do I do eat these things myself, so they have to pass my standard. <laughs> so. Okay, I put the water, the water on. Is that with the remaining lentils? Um, there are, there's no lentils in there, but that's the cooking yeah. water. Is the cooking water for the oh, lentils? The lentils yeah, because it's got the it's got a lot of goodness in there. You just and, top that up. Yeah. yeah, and also we will want to to add uh, once the water is boiling, we add a little bit of olive oil as well because the lentil sheets are quite big. We don't want to stick. Wait, where am I? These we we do actually a few at a time because I mean it does say on the packet that you don't need to you don't need to cook them you can use them straight away I don't like doing that I like to just uh, very quickly blanch them for about a minute um, because I don't like crunchy crunchy lasagna. Okay. This, by the way, the, um, the way that we prepare the, uh, the, the lentils ragu, it's a lovely dish uh, on its own. So you can you can serve this as it is, you know. Um, it's called lenticchie, lenticchie in umido, as we call them. In umido is means like uh, moist, and uh, it's a preparation basically you do when you when you cook something in uh, tomato sauce for a, an extended period of time in that way. Um, I remember when my, my grandmother used to make um, sauce for a variety of dishes. I mean, this is when she was using meat. She would cook like a big, a big pot of tomato sauce with, uh, with vegetables and meat in there. And it would stay on the stove all day. So she put it on in the morning and it would be ready by the evening. And then she would have enough sauce to last it for a month or so. So she would then um, put it in smaller containers and, and keep it in the freezer. Okay, I think the lentils are pretty much pretty much done. So we will need to turn the oven on now. So I'll have the oven on 200. You can see the lentils now. Are, <clears throat> there is a little bit of a little bit of juice left, which would tend to would tend to be reabsorbed as well once we turn the heat off. So, you want to have a taste, Catherine? Yeah, you have a taste. We have an independent, independent. Um, it's lovely. Really, yeah. really nice. A very rich, as I say, it's a very rich um, dish already. Um, Deborah wants to know what oven heat. Uh, depending on your oven, between 180 and 200. Okay, so quite quite hot, but not not to the not to the maximum. 
I don't have um, numbers. I've got um, centigrade degrees on my oven, so I'm not quite sure what you will call that if you have numbers. I think it would be the third setting from the top. So if it's nine, it's the maximum, you would have it on seven, maybe. Did I get that right? Are you Googling? Okay, we are Googling as we speak, just to find out what 200 means in, uh, in numbers. If you go one of those ovens, uh, what uh, number setting? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, not paying Okay, we have technical problems. We have the iPad here. That's that. Okay. Uh, what's that? All right. We just covered this actually. 200 degrees is gas mark state, 190 is gas mark 5, 177 gas mark 4. Okay, so we want to put 200 is what? That's mark 6? So gas mark 6 is 200. Okay, so 200 is gas mark 6, apparently. So you'll have it, you'll have it on 6. And um, so you want to have a, um, a tray where to cook, uh, where you, to cook your lasagna. Okay, um, the, how, how tall you stack them is completely, completely up to you. Okay, so you can have them as, as low or as high as you as you want them. So we could, what we do, we add uh, one layer after another, um, and um, and you can um, so you can use a, a tool. Let me show you. Uh, water for lasagna, lasagna sheet is on. Yes, it is on. We're just waiting for it to boil, and then we start uh, putting them in. So you can do it on a high, on a very high um, tray like this. Like I, if I was making a lot of lasagna, we use something like this. And uh, it's up to you how tall you want. I and mean, if you if you you can do them right up to the top, and it's a nice, really nice, uh, deep, deep lasagna about like this. Or you can make them, uh, you can make them thinner at the moment. I've been using this one, so my lasagna would be quite um, quite thin. Um, but you can um, you can do them as as, as I say as, as thin or as thick as you like. Okay, so I think I'm happy with this. After with the consistencies, as you can see, there is there is no liquid, pretty much there is hardly any liquid left. Okay, this is what I meant by reducing reducing the sauce. When you first put the tomato, or even we even put some ladle full of um, of cooking water. Um, the water you didn't put any salt in the water yet yet because it takes longer to uh, takes longer to boil. You add salt. I'll add some salt. Let's see. Uh, the, the water from the um, uh, from the lentils I've already had some salt, so I'll check. I'll check and taste it in a minute and see how much we need to need to add. So I turn the um, I turn these off. So we're just waiting. We're just waiting for this to um, uh, to come to the boil. And what we do, I will taste the water. It's actually already quite salty. So mine doesn't need doesn't need any um, any water. Any salt. Uh, this was enough. Uh, my lentils are ready, so I've turned them off. So at the moment while we're waiting, I'll just tidy up a little bit. So it will be such a mess to, to do later. Okay, I suppose we could start. We could start preparing um, the lasagna at the moment. So the first two ingredients are here. So the first thing we do, we put a layer of lentils. <clears throat> uh, 
And by the way, if you have some um, some fresh basil, we can add a little bit of that as well. So it's not necessary, but it adds something to the dish if you, if you do. Okay, so we do one layer of this, and then <clears throat> we'll have one one layer of the bechamel sauce. As you can see by now, it's fairly it's fairly thick. Very thick actually. We might need to warm it up again actually to make it a little bit easier to apply. Okay, so we got one layer of this. As I got some fresh basil here and I want to show off, I will add a little bit. Let's have, let's have a couple of couple of basil leaves and just break them like this into the, the top. Maybe it says great recipe. And I'll have a, a little layer of of cheese. Make it looks so yummy. Not too much cheese, but a little bit adds to the taste. Now cheese is not, is one of my, <clears throat> obviously we have it in our family, a lot of um, a lot of the recipes for lasagna don't have any cheese, they put just the bechamel sauce. But I do like a little bit of cheese. And you can also add a tiny little bit of pepper as well. Okay. Now, the only thing we need is the lasagna. Water is boiling, so we add a little bit of olive oil to the water. And we start adding some of the lasagna sheets. We do like three or four, three or four times. No more than that. And I literally keep them in there for just about just about a minute. And then what uh, was added after the basil that we would like to know? What was that added after the basil? A little bit of cheese. Okay. Obviously, vegan we use cheese, vegan, vegan cheese and uh, and a pinch of pepper. Yeah. Mine to the big pot. This is we want to make sure after the basil out of the bottle. Out of the bottle. Um, I just added a little bit of pepper. Just added a little bit of pepper also. Okay, so we want to take these out in literally just a minute. They want to, they still they still have to be they don't want them to be too soft. But just to the point where they start bending. Yeah, I am I'm basically I'm drawing them a little bit. Oh, getting tricky. Deborah says, this is a new way to assemble the sign for me. I'm keeping this recipe. It's a lot healthier than my old version. That's from Deborah. Oh, that's from Evelyn, sorry. Did you hear that? I'm struggling. Yes, Evelyn, thank you very much for the people that are struggling to get this thing out. I just want to make sure that they don't stick either. Okay. So number one done. So after uh, just dry them slightly and we can add them to the layer. Okay, so the first layer is complete and what we do, we'll add another layer. Yeah. 
again another layer of lentils. Not a big celery stick. Okay, that will do. Um, Rosaline saying long sheets cooking for. Literally one minute, Rosaline. So very, very quick. Um, what I will do now, actually, I will just gently warm up the bechamel because it's getting a bit too thick. Okay. Couple of little tools of bechamel. Okay, and we repeat the process again and put some more, some more fresh basil leaves. If, I say if you have them, it doesn't matter if you don't, you know, this is just like a, a something I added to this, you know, the spare at the moment, because when you go fresh ingredients, it just adds to any dish that you prepare. And as we go up to like pot of fresh basil, say, why not? <clears throat> Again, a little pinch of pepper. You don't want to go over the top with the pepper because I want to make it lasagna is not a dish to have. Uh, it needs to have a lot of heat. Okay, so we put some more some more lasagna on your sheets. I've got one one left from my previous thing, so we need. You need another. Uh, okay. Well, I can use this one already. This is going to be enough for my lasagna. So it's going to have just going to have <clears throat> two layers of pasta, and then I'm going to have another layer of um, um, obviously of of filling at the top. The oven is on, so you should have all the oven on on 200, 200 degrees. Okay, the shimmer will be a little bit loose now. Can you stop again? So when these are ready, and again, these are only, you only cook for about a minute. I mean, it's, you can, you can, if you want to use them as they are. I prefer softening them up a little bit in, um, in boiling water. Um, but if you want, you can you can use them as they are the start of the box. Let's make sure when you when you put them in that they're not um, they're not sticking to each other. So that's why I'm not doing a lot together because it's quite you know quite difficult to cook a lot of those without making them without making them stick. So we're almost we're almost there. Another another two or three minutes, and we'll be ready to put the um, lasagna in the oven. Oh, sorry, I forgot the second layer. I forgot to add a, a little layer of cheese. So just lift this gently. I have the pepper already. Okay, take it down the corner. Okay, let's take it out. If you can, without punish. Okay. 
we are trying to stick. I won't let them. Okay, it's the number two, which is going to be a last one away. Go another line with it. <clears throat> and this is number three. Oh, by the way, before we um, before we finish, uh, have you all got access to the new um, Genius U page where you're going to store all the recipes? This is this is going to go going to write them all down now, so it will be easier for you to um, um, to do it later. Um, I just I just try them all. Okay. Um, so if you don't have access, let me know because I will send you an email with the. I'm doing it today. That's the I received your email last week. Thanks, Luca. That's Fantastic. Amazing. Fantastic. Okay, so we want to put now. now um, what am I doing? Sorry, excuse me, all of you. I should have put these first, but it doesn't matter. The bechamel will never hurt. So I'll add. I'll just mix it all in, make it richer. Another layer of lentils. It has, funny enough, I mean, the lentils have the consistency of, um, of mincemeat. So um, I, I bet you that a lot of people wouldn't be able to tell, tell the difference once they eat them. Okay, so this is a nice layer of lentils. We have to put a generous la layer of Bechamel on top. You won't have any basil obviously on this layer because it would just get burnt. I want to make sure that bechamel covers most of the lasagna. And just spread it with a spoon. I'll add a little bit more. I can see it is, it is, as it's coming together, it's almost like a work of art, isn't it? Especially when you cut it, when you cut into it to eat it. Okay, so I've been quite liberal with the bechamel here. Looks like a cake. It does look like a cake. Okay, so another layer of cheese. What cheese have you used? I've used the um, the, the vegan parmesan. The, the I've, I've, you've seen me use many times before. Um, part of it has grated, part of it has already grated to save time. Okay, so a nice layer of cheese. And now. And at the top, we want to have a little a glug of olive oil. Okay. And we are ready to uh, put it in the oven now. Okay, so this now will go in the oven and will take about, depending on your oven and depending on the thickness of your lasagna, about 20 25 minutes. Okay, so it goes in there, um, and um, pretty much it's um, you know, all our work is done. We just have to wait uh, for that to be ready. Um, so, um, obviously, I won't quick, I won't keep you on the, on the video for half an hour waiting, waiting for that to cook. 
Um, but um, if you before before we go, so what what we'll do? Um, I will post a photo of the lasagna once it, once it comes out once it's ready, and it would be lovely if you could do the same. Um, you know, to show me how it um, you know it looks um, at the end at the end of the day uh, once you cooked it. <clears throat> but in the meantime, before we go, if you have any um, any questions or anything uh, that I can clarify uh, as I finished I finished my work for the day, um, let me know and I'll and I'll clarify anything you need to you need to um, have, have confirmed. Um, Evelyn says there's nothing quite like homemade lasagna. Now I can become a vegetarian. Thank you very much. Glad to meet you. Well, you're very welcome, Evelyn. Evelyn, it's um. This looks amazing from Deborah. That's very kind of her to tune in. Thank you very much, Deborah. Thank you, thank you for tuning in all the way from Texas. Uh, it's um, it's lovely. We had um, we had somebody from Australia um, a few weeks ago. Now we got somebody from the USA. It's nice. This is a truly international. Italian cooking is a truly international. Um, way of cooking, cooking uh, food, and you know, if, if you can, if you can see what we use today, these are all like poor ingredients. Italian cooking is very poor because <clears throat> because of the way of the way that people were um, up to up to very recently. People were very poor and then just cooked with whatever they could, and and it's it's mainly that's why that's why I started all this this uh, this vegan class because. You know, you see all these funny recipes once you become vegan, you know, it seems like all, all, all you eat is, is like things that you've never seen, you've never seen before. But a lot of the Italian dishes are naturally <coughs> vegetarian and vegan because that's what people had to eat. They never, they never ate meat because they just, they, they, it was, it was, um, they couldn't get their hands on, on, on it and it was too expensive, too expensive to buy. Fish wasn't an option because most people lived uh, inland and, uh, and near the mountains. So <clears throat> all they had left was, was pretty much uh, vegetables. Um, and uh, a lot of the dishes are just based, uh, based on that. Vegetable, pulses, obviously grains, and, uh, and uh, a lot of combinations of that. If you can think of a way of cooking pasta and, and, and rice, possibly it's been done before. <laughs> so you just need to Google um, pasta or rice with your ingredients and, and I'm sure it will come up. Um, Anyway, um, a few comments. <coughs> Deborah says this looks amazing. I love this. Michaela says it looks yummy. Maria says I will definitely try this. Looking forward to seeing lentil recipes. Fantastic, fantastic. And um, and please remember, <coughs> that if you got if you have any lentils left, that makes a lovely a lovely dish in itself. You can eat them as they are. Let me just put a little a little bit of um, olive oil on top, and they are ready. You know they're ready to have as a as a side dish or as a vegetable. As a vegetable dish and very rich and very tasty. Um, so, any any more questions? <clears throat> what are you cooking next week? Oh yes, uh, next week. Um, next week we, we thought we'll um, <clears throat> carry on on the theme of uh, pulses and I will do another another dish that is uh, very traditional in Italy which is pasta and beans. Um, it's again. It doesn't sound very glamorous when uh, when you mention it like this, but it's absolutely another one of the delicious dishes. Like you've had pasta ceci before. This is a different type, cooked in a different way, <clears throat> but just uh, just as delicious. And we also use the beans as we cook in beans. We use the beans as as well to make a, a bean salad as well um, as a as a side dish. Okay, so. Um, Unless, unless you have any 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 questions that you want me to clarify, I will. Uh... Oh, yes, um, Evelyn says, um, oh, that's lovely. Um, Bacioni, Catalina, Luca, alla prossima settimana. Oh. Looking forward to pasta and beans. My husband is English, he loves it. Oh, great. It's, by the way, the, the name in Italian is pasta e fagioli. Okay, so if you, if you wanted to, to show off with somebody and say, well, next, next Saturday I'm having pasta e fagioli. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, I will uh, I will leave you with your lasagna. Keep an eye on it. Uh, say it depends on how many how many layers you've done, but generally about twenty five minutes half an hour should be should be enough um, uh, to cook your lasagna. Okay. So thank you very much, and um, I will see you next week. Ciao, Evelyn. Ciao, Evelyn. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye from Deborah. Okay, goodbye, Deborah. Goodbye, everyone.